we are again, another lovely scene to do. We did this, this one last, and I'm going to do one very similar, which is from that angle there, uh, straight across. Beautiful reflections in it. Um, in a very similar way, I'm going to block up my colours. Um, all I've got here on the photograph is just white here. So I've got to really use my imagination and uh, set the theme going by using much more interesting colours there. And that's where I'm going to start off is with that sky. I don't just want white there, so I'm going to start with um, very light lemon yellow uh, for that sky. Very light indeed, and then put across some, um, some darks afterwards. So we can wet that up uh, nice and loose. Not entirely mixing the paint so that we get a nice crisscross technique, um, broken colour of this cream. Come right up through into here. I'm going to be able to put this cream on later again as well. Hold up this. And I can build these lovely colours up with my cream. And I want to do broken colour. Now I have been working with vertical strokes. Uh, but I think on this one I may well have a much more broken colour effect. Sort of these dark colours show through in that in a minute when I'll put those on. Got a bit of pink going on in the building, so I don't want too much pink on there. Let's take a slightly warmer hue and take a little bit of orange and just work broken colour orange into this. Some something with verticals with smaller strokes. And that will set the tone for the whole painting. There we are then, we've got a nice vibrant sky there. And again, it looks quite dark against this white, but we must remember that when we paint the white out, we're going to be left with these as lighter colours. There we are, that's enough of that. Okay, we'll let that dry back before we start painting in the leaves on the trees. And we'll look and see if that colour is anywhere else. Well, yes, I mean, we've got some quite deep yellow um, creams coming down to the buildings down here. So for instance, if we came down here, this area here is, um, is a house, covering quite large areas very quickly this way, up the back of that building there, and you can see now how that's going to be darker against this um, light of the sky, come across here, and uh, the whole thing will be affected by it. The roof of that is a bit warmer, so I'm going to make that quite a bit stronger in a moment. Got this colour here, yeah, that building there. Trying to just use, I mean, use, this is a, a flat, but it's um, slightly furry edge now, but I want to keep these nice buildings. Lock these colours in as quickly as I can. Get rid of this white as quickly as I can, something that you always see me doing, because I can't see if the colours are correct or not until I get the values all right one to another. Put the right colours in the right places and the right shapes relevant one to another and our picture should start to appear. Stick it in with the end of my brush all the way through there. Warmer now. I'm going to take a wee touch of a little bit into that. See how strong that's going to need to go. That's a little bit too warm, so I'm going to take that down with some a touch of purple, and we'll just go back in there again and look at that lovely colour. But, uh, coming in here, that warmth, the same here. Push this against that sky. And the same here with the chimney. Up here, I that much a bit more ultramarine into that to make it a, a deeper, richer shadow against that sky. Different colour bands again, a bit of green with it. That same grey green. The light sort of in the background here, I mean, it's darker a bit later. Let's just get these base colours in at the moment. And it's a matter of we're starting now to 
blocking the undercolours. That lovely dark, so much of this light. So I've just mixed up some Prussian blue, some yellow ochre, and a little touch of uh, alizarin crimson into it to get a bit of warmth going there. And I'm going to block in these these light areas. These, sorry, these um, leaf areas here, right the way down into here. At the moment, just big brush, big blobs of colour, and these big old brush strokes. Really enjoy yourself. Not too worried about furry edges at the moment. I'm going to come back and work into all of this. I'm not going to enjoy painting. Why are we doing it? Got to enjoy it. Oh, it's on my brush. There's some darks elsewhere. Let's get them in. Lovely. Warm dark is down here as well, coming up into here. Thin it down a bit and uh, just whack it in here and put some more colour on top later. What I want at the moment is just to get basic tones, warms and cools, basic tones. Look at the stronger greens going on. This is a much warmer, stronger yellow green. Immediately look at these different yellowy greens, browny greens. Don't waste any time on it. For the colour, go straight for it. Just work it in. If it's happening down here, well, we can do the same. Reflecting down there. Get a little bit more careful just there. On that top of that weir. Just bring that weir down into the edges of it dark there before I put the light in. Get the feeling of the water trickling over there or cascading over there, whichever. It's like bringing those marks down with the brush and we'll bring those marks up into the bushes again, flicking the brush to give a looser end. We can put the lights back in there later. Let's just get a bit of this white straight away as soon as we can. I don't want any of that white canvas shine. Got to lose it all. You see that's a sort of mid-tone, isn't it? It's not a, a very deep green, but it's uh, blue-green. It's just a sort of mid with the burnt sienna and the Prussian blue. Dowie painting isn't fun, you can paint like this. Just slap it in and really enjoy it. As soon as I can get rid of all this white, I can take a smaller brush and start to work up some actual clear colours. I can't do it. almost got rid of my white now I can just begin to see where my colours are going to need to go. Get rid of all of these nasty bits of white canvas. Right, well I think we've got rid of the most of the whites now it's possible to work into this a bit more with a smaller brush and more colour perhaps. Right, so we go down brushes now and, and start to work some actual details and more colour into this. I'm going to move on to a filbert now and we'll start on these leaves. I've got the basics mapped out canvas covered but I'm still happy with the canvas showing through in places but you can see what I've got to do now. So I'm going to work up my dark greens and uh, 
mid greens here now. Take some sap green first of all, a little bit of Prussian blue. And this brush allows me to make much better leaf shapes so I can actually start to put on better shapes of these uh, various give it uh, water in that, don't want that it's chuckling down too much just then and that's again the beauty of a filbert is we've got a rounded edge rather than a flat edge and break open these chunkier shapes that I've done earlier make them a lot more branch-like and leaf-like I like to use the word cascade when I'm painting leaves because trees are a little bit like atomic explosions and waterfalls as the bomb hits the ground or the acorn hits the soil it explodes upwards and uh, mushrooms out into umbrellas of leaves that will gradually drop downward like mushrooms as the tree gets older and autumn comes on. So now we're really starting to feel these lovely leaf shapes here with these darks behind. At the moment I'm going to come back onto this with the creams and bring the creams back through these leaves to make the lights a bit more solid and not furry. Just building up a sap green over these now. I'll make it a bit lighter still. Take some um, emerald with a bit of the lemon yellow and we'll just see about adding some greener green to the edges here. A lot more lemon yellow in it. Quite strong pure colours so they do show. I'm just going to come back into those trees clean my brush completely and make that cream again and just come into those dark areas with a few lighter ones to uh, pick out the light shining through there. So nice thick heavy body white, a little touch of the yellow for the cream again. We should have something similar to what we had before there. That's it. Now back up into here and let's pick up on these lovely light areas that are shining through here with clean pieces of colour just shining through a bit of green here and there on them plenty of heavy body white on that And we'll really pick up on these Let me look where else this same colour comes, this cream Is it coming through behind here in places as well? Yes it is, so we'll pick up on those and a bit of light building behind here as well and where these colours are coming The light just starting to shine through the back of my canvas again which is a nuisance because if it does that I can't see what I'm doing. Nice clean colour is the important thing here. We must have really pure colours going on top of here and if they're dead I've got to come back and redo them again. Well, another day dawns and uh, I'm doing a workshop in between now, Mr. Day. Here I am ready and willing to come back and work on this painting further. We've quite successfully worked up here I need to come down a bit, but before I do, I'm just going to uh, pick up a flat again. Right, now I need to start finding more purer colours around here. Let's go back to my darks a moment. Let's get some of these darks back. I'm going to go to that slightly larger brush now. And when we did that before, we were using Prussian blue and uh, a little touch of and sienna. You can even go a fraction warmer and add a, a touch of glitter into it. And suddenly when we put something darker like this on, 
what seemed dark before does not seem so dark now. got the darks built up and back to the medium tones and the, the greens again take a bit of emerald and a bit of cerulean sort of build up a slightly cooler cool green here again let's put a little bit more lemon let yellow into that just see if we can just warm it up a little bit catch the light coming over here Maybe now the paint is just starting to come into shape a bit more, for me anyway. Now some more <coughs> deeper chrome yellow greens. Take some, uh, take some chrome yellow and a little bit of white and mix it in with that emerald we had a bit earlier. Just see if we can go slightly stronger with these. Pillars and places here, these autumn colours for these. But the sits in the colour circle and, uh, and obviously warm and cools as well. And, uh, there we going to help you play lights against darks, warm against cools, rough against smooth. You can really enjoy these colours in here, put them working for you. Okay, suddenly the painting is starting to achieve what we want. The balance is a bit strange just here though. I think uh, it's a lot of work in a painting like this. It's quite it's more detail than I expected it to be actually when I, when I started this. And now it's really starting to pull together and I can see a lot more what I'm doing here. A lot better. To go a little more orange up into these buildings here. So I'm going to take a little bit of cadmium orange and white and tired of the violet and then down here we've got this beautiful little red goat I want to just pick up, I have to use a, a finer brush for that I think and let's use this little brush um, and it's, let me do it with this, it's so I can see just down here And I've got to come back to my lights again because we've got um, a very light cream, light blue, light cream. If they're happening up here, then they've got to be happening down here. So this is where I, I wanted to pick up. Just down to these lights that are coming down through. Just a matter of balance. I make sure the marks are where they need to be for this painting to just balance out. On the opposite way around, bring a couple of lights back through it. In the same way, the other way. We can find some. Just here, especially. I don't think I need to tickle much more, I think that's. Really, about as far as I'm going to go with it. Yep, I think that'll do it. So we've just got the sign button. And we're on to a, a street going down to the river next, which is rather fun. Quite different to what I'm looking forward to doing. Oh, there we are.